one bidding, it's a light frame. I'm going to repeat. It says five times, but the last time I used it, it was 10. I set the ISO. The calibration I set out of dark, so it's going to prompt me to put the cover on the telescope so it'll take a dark frame and then subtract that from the light frame uh, before saving uh, those images to my PC. Um, yeah, similarly, uh, auto guiders, just the same thing. It's going to Oh, I know, I probably didn't connect on the camera last time. <laughs> uh, connected, but let's connect. And now it's connected. I'm going to try that one more time because I'm glad for punishment. So we got weight here. It's a 30 second exposure, so it's going to be all white because of the daylight, but uh, you get the idea. Um, will pop up. Okay, so this is a fits uh, viewer. It saves both the FITS format and the RAW format of the Canon to the hard drive. So, um, you know, this this would this would be you know you'd see your stars, etc. Here, in bright objects. It's it's kind of grainy unless you spend some time doing dark frame subtraction to this as well. Um, but that just shows you you know. You can get a sample of what you want, you can focus, and then you can just sit down and take the series and it'll just go and crank out as many of these as you want. I failed to point out that I could uh, define multiple series so I could make a light frame, a dark frame, a bias frame, and it'll just finish one and go on and do the next. So it's, it's quite handy in that way. Um, one thing I'll point out on the auto guider thing, still kind of the same thing, you can connect. Um, there's a calibration step <clears throat> and there's a graph that once it's auto guiding it'll plot uh, movement error and it's measured in uh, what do I want to say uh, pixels uh, so it, it's trying to stay under a one pixel threshold for ideal gu guiding otherwise you know your stars wander and get oblong so Fundamentally, that's the software, and then at the end of the night, I would just uh, close everything down here. I would navigate to my folder where my pictures are. I'd open up another window uh, to, to my cloud server uh, in the house, and I'd just move all the pictures for processing in the house, and I don't do it out here. Um, <clears throat> so that is a brief rundown of how I use the com computer. Now, of course, until you do it, it means not too much, but um, again, then I would just, you know, reverse my thing. You know, I'd turn off the computer, I'd turn off uh, my mount power, my uh, camera, that's always on. I gotta put caps on to uh, cover it all up. I'll just show you this this mask. It just has the prongs and it just basically sets on there when you use it. So that's how you use one of those. Do your focusing, take it off. Um, and then anything else that's noteworthy. Um, maybe I'll just pan around a little bit. So uh, my help stick, my two ladder, my step stool. Uh, I just got some of my basic tools that I use to adjust my culmination. That's the last scope I bought that used to be on here. Um, of course, the computer. I got a little speaker system there, so I listen to Pandora. Um, odds and ends, some more lenses. Uh, I did have a camera mount on my old uh, 
setup. The spare weights I've used in the past. That's an old uh, Mead DSi camera I don't really use anymore, which I think I might get rid of. Um, these are my tools that I use the most. This is a uh, Cheshire culminating eyepiece. And then, of course, I have the uh, LaserMate culminator tool as well. And I got temperature if I need it to, to create a dark frame library. Um, one of the last things I tried doing was a, uh, a flat frame. So I would use that whiteboard illuminated by my PC monitor uh, to take some flat frames for further reduction of, of the light pictures. Uh, I tried a uh, rheostat dimmer switch on that bulb, but it just didn't get dim enough for the long exposures. And I think that's it. I think I'm going to walk outside and give, give you another picture of the other side of the building. And we'll call it it. Uh, call it a day. So I guess I didn't show it in motion, but of course the top does move and uh, I'll get you some measurements of the inside. That's it.